Hello children, in this video lecture, I will explain you chapter 1 of Onbin. The chapter 1 is The Portrait of a Lady, written by Kushwan Singh. Let's take a look about the author. Let's know about the author more. Kushwan Singh, one of the best known Indian writers of all times, was born in 1915 in Hadali now in Pakistan. He was well-known novelist, journalist, diplomat, lawyer and politician. His experience in the 1947 partition of India inspired him to write Train to Pakistan in 1956, which became his most well-known novel. He had minutely observed the life in his works. He is even today best known for his literary works he was honored with Padma Vibhushan Sahitya Academy Fellowship. Let's know what is the main idea of the chapter about the chapter. The portrait of a lady is part of an autobiography by Kushwan Singh. In this story, he describes his relationship with his grandmother over the years. So for many years, he had a, what kind of relationship he had. He had explained this thing in this story or through this story. He draws a pen paint portrait of his grandmother. He has shown the picture in detail how was his grandmother. He explains her appearance which helps create an image in the reader's mind. He has described his feelings each and everything minutely so we can came to know how she looks what kind of uh, character she was. In other words, the story is a loving tribute from a grandson to his grandmother. He has written this story to make her, his grandmother memorable always in his readers' minds. That's why he has written this story about his grandmother. The story gives a picture of human relationships, the bonding between grandson and grandmother, the morning between animals and human beings and birds and human beings. It is a realistic account of how the grandparents will give all their time, attention and love to their grandchildren. It is obvious in our Indian society that grandparents take utmost care of their grandchildren. In this chapter, there are mainly two characters. Let's know about the character of the chapters, characters, grandmother first. Kushwan Singh's grandmother is described as an extremely religious person. She was very religious. She always does uh, continuously throughout the day or uh, religious activity. She was a very kind lady. She was short, fat and slightly bent. Her face was wrinkled and she was always dressed in sportless white clothes. In the village, she took care of all the needs of the author when he was a child. We will see this story in detail, then you come to know. Second character is Kushwan Singh, the author himself. He recounts, he remembers his childhood days in this story and his relationship with his grandmother. Children, in the beginning of the chapter in your text, uh, there are few expressions are given phrases are given I have given here its meaning so learn it well it will be helpful for your examination purpose too and it will help you to understand the chapter very well let's start an explanation with summary of the chapter children I have kept here text for you and the summary in the next slide and meanings Let's start explanation with summary of the chapter. The whole lesson had been narrated by the author himself here. In the beginning of the chapter, the author had recalled his grandmother as a very old lady. For the 20 years that the author had known his grandmother, he had found her old and wrinkled. People used to tell author that once upon a time, his grandmother was young and beautiful she had a husband also but it was difficult to believe 
this for the author the author's grandfather photo hung on the wall of the drawing room he wore a big turban his clothes were loose he had a long white colored beard that reached his chest in the portrait grandfather looked at least a hundred years old because he looked old the author thought that his grandfather never had a wife or a children the author thought that his grandfather could have only grandchildren even it was difficult for the author to believe that his grandmother had even young and beautiful she used to tell him and his cousins about her childhood memories like the games she used to play as a child they thought that it was silly and unreasonable that their grandmother played games they thought that this were the stories similar to other stories of saints told by grandmother children recall your grandparents is such a beautiful thing in any grandchildren's life the author begins this chapter with a description of the appearance of his grandmother and grandfather from when he has seen her she was old and wrinkled for him and he hardly imagine that his grandmother was once young beautiful and having a husband the author could uh, he was not believe that thing that this thing had happened with his grandmother then he made aware his readers about his grandfather's appearance the author made us appear about his grandfather's appearance how he was looking he looked too old in his portrait in his picture uh, hung on the wall and having a wife or children but having also hundreds of grandchildren he was not look like that he was uh, looking too much old so it was once the author said that it was hard to believe that he had a wife or a children and in next sentence he said that he looked like that he had a hundred of hundreds of children so here is a contradiction in his thought means he was not sure about his author says he was too old we need to conclude over here appearance of grandparents is also uh, contradict here according to him his grandfather looked very old and his grandmother looked old same from the past 20 years this is stated in the first para even even from when the author knew his grandmother her personality and nature it was hard to believe that she played games as a child for them it was like a tale it was like a story of a saint which uh, his grandmother was sharing used to with these children so he thought that it was that kind of one story grandmother used to told them and one more thing here the author compares his grandmother with saints with sages <laughs> she lived her life like a saint she used to do her work silently like them here in the next para the author had always seen her as short and fat lady her back was bent due to old age her whole face was full of wrinkles they all were sure that the grandmother had always been like that only she seemed so old and she had been the same for the past 20 years according to the author she was beautiful but not pretty she used to walk awkwardly in the house she used to wear clean white clothes that did not have any sport her waist was bent forward she used to keep 
one hand on her waist and balance herself in other hand she had rosary to say her prayers she was not usually combed and tied her white silvery hair her silvery white hair used to scatter and spread over her yellow and wrinkled face her lips constantly moved in for a prayer in such a low voice that was difficult to hear it she looked like snowy mountains in winter season she looked like a white body moving with lot of calmness she looked very beautiful pure and satisfied person again more vivid and detailed description of his uh, grandmother the author gives here in this para due to old age her body was slightly bent and she walked in a same condition her appearance looked same from past 20 years to the author he repeated again in the second para the same line which he had written and said to the authors again is repeating the same thing the author had repeated here again for the readers reference ke remember that his grandmother was looking the same from the past 20 years we can understand from this line that the grandmother was too dear to the author so he could not find any change in the appearance of his grandmother she always same look to her to him every after so many years means you can say and again the author told her readers that it was difficult for him to believe that she was pretty because he had seen her only old and wrinkled face she used to wear pure white clothes this symbolizes her identity as a saint as a sage as a sadhu again here in this lines like a saint she used to keep mala or rosary in a hand and chanting constantly praying constantly god's name her hair is compared with silver color means pure white and few of it comes on her wrinkled face she used to not bother about her uh, appearance how she was looking but in her from inner side she was so beautiful such a kind lady uh, her outer appearance was not important for author's grandmother she was lost bothered about her appearance uh, and she was the person who believed in good deeds only and yes she was profoundly religious she was always doing one or the other religious things due to it only the author confirms to the reader that she was pretty not by not by her looks but by her karma her deeds he compared her with a landscape or a beautiful scenery of a mountain or any natural surroundings like a mountain she was firm and sure about her deeds she was a peace loving person and that we could judge from the description of her appearance again and again given by the author father the author and his grandmother were good friends he is uh, saying this thing his parents left him to stay with uh, her when they shifted to the city they were always together in the village because they both are the company of each other the author's grandmother took care of all his needs like anyone's grandmother she used to wake him up every morning and get him ready for the school she say, said her morning prayer in an unchanging sing sang manner she used to say her prayers while she bath and dress the author she hoped that she would listen to it and understand the prayer the author liked her voice so he lis- listened to the prayer but he did not make any effort to learn them then she would bring his wooden slate which she had already washed and plastered it with yellow chalk she would also bring 
his earthening pot and red pen. She would tie them together and give them the bundle to the author. After that, she would give him a thick stale chapatis with a little butter and a sugar spread on it. Then together they went to school. She used to carry several stale chapatis with her for the village dogs. Like any loving grandparent, author's grandmother was taking care of him in his childhood. Author's parents went to the city for better options and left the author and his grandmother in the village. Till they were not established, they have not settled themselves in the city. Both our grandmother and grandson are living in the village and parents in the city. Grandmother was alone to take care of her child. So at that time, grandmother used to do all the works of the author from making him ready for the school with all essential things as well as preparing breakfast for him. But every time her chanting of God's name was continuous in hope that the author would learn and recite something from it. Author agreed that he was not paying attention to the prayers and never tried to learn it. Your author showed us one more good characteristic of her grandmother's nature. As she was tender, loving, caring towards the author as well as she used to show her same nature towards animals too. By feeding the stale chapatis to the street dogs on returning after the school. The author's grandmother always went to school with him. The school was attached to the temple that the priest used to teach children. alphabet and the morning prayer. The children sat in two rows in the veranda. Together they would sing alphabets and prayers while the grandmother sat inside the temple. She spent her time in reading holy books. After finishing they would walk back together. The street dogs used to wait for them at the door of the temple. They would follow them to their home. They growled and fought with each other for the stale chapatis which she fed them. When the author's parents got settled in the city, they called them. <coughs> the turning point came in their relationship when they moved to the city to stay with his parents. This was a major change in friendship between the author and his grandmother. They both shared the same room in the city. The author went to an English school in a motor bus. The grandmother could not accompany him to the school. There were no dogs in the street whom she could feed as she did in the village. So she started giving food to sparrows in the open space of their house. Grandmother understood very well her responsibilities towards this child. She used to give company to the author on his way to school. And as she was old, so she was not coming back home again and collecting the child after the school. Rather, she stayed there in the school, which is in the temple. And give that time to read religious books. This shows us again that she was deeply believed in religion and constantly spent her time in one or the other religious activities. She even helped the author in his studies in the village. He 
Here the first phase completed of the relationship of the child of the grandson and his grandmother. Now the second phase begins as soon as when they shifted to the city. In the village they shared each and every moment. The whole house In the whole house together, they were, they were in the village. They shared each and every moment together because they both were alone in the house. But in the city, author mentioned here that they shared the same room. Means both of have the same surrounding but now their lifestyle would be changed. Because the author had started going to school uh, in the city in English medium school whose duration is more than the village school. Timing is more. The author, the other activity change was that the author now started going to school by school bus. So the grandmother was not able to give him company on the way to school. To feed something to someone that is tradition continued in the city by feeding sparrows and the bread, uh, the bread feeding sparrows the bread crumbs in the open courtyard instead of the dogs of the village. This she has started new thing when she started to live in the city. Now let's see our story further. As the years passed one after the other, the grandmother and her grandson saw less of each other. For sometimes she used, she used to wake him up and got him ready for the school. When he came back from school, she used to ask him about his studies. She wanted to know what his teachers had taught him in school that day. The author used to tell English words that he had learnt. He also told her about several principles of science. She was not able to understand anything and this made her unhappy because she could not help him in his homework. She had no faith in what was being taught in the English medium school. She felt sad that there was no teaching about God and books of religion at the new school. She did not approve of such an education. Moreover, the author informed her one day that he would be taught music in his school. She was very disturbed and upset at the idea of music lessons being given at the English school. She thought that music is not a good art. According to her, music was followed by rugs and beggars. Good people should not learn music. She did not say anything. But her silence conveyed that she did not approve of learning music. After that, she started to talk to the author on very less occasions. One more thing is changed is that initially when the author was child at that time she used to wake him up and help him to get ready. But gradually when the author was a grown up child she stopped doing all that things. They started to spend very less time with each other. For few initial years she used to ask the author about his studies and which lessons he had learned in detail because she used to make him study and taught him lessons of language and religions, lessons taught by priests in the village. So she, what, she inquired about it. Even author explained about all his studies in English only and all about principles of science. She disliked it completely. She uh, firmly believed that this study based on the religion and 
ये मदर तक मदर टंग शुड बी टॉट इन एवरी स्कूल वेन वंस शी केम टू नो अबाउट दी ऑथर्स म्यूजिक लेसन इन स्कूल शी काउंटेड इट एज अ लोअर कैटेगरी डेड लोअर कैटेगरी वर्क शी बिलीव दैट पीपल हु लर्न म्यूजिक एंड संग दे वर नॉट एबल टू गैट इनफ फ्रॉम देयर फैमिली बाई डूइंग हार्ड वर्क दैट्स वाई दे स्टार्टेड दिस वर्क सो शी काउंटेड इट लो एंड शी स्टार्टेड टू टॉक लेस और शी हैड ऑलमोस्ट स्टॉप्ड हर टॉक विथ दी ऑथर इमीडिएटली आफ्टर नोइंग दैट दी ऑथर इज टेकिंग म्यूजिक लेसन्स इन दी स्कूल This was the end of the second phase in their relationship. Now the story takes a little bit turn, and the third phase will start of their relationship. The relationship is changing phase wise in this chapter. The common link of friendship between the author and the grandmother was broken now. when the author went to the university and was given a room of his own at that moment almost they both have stopped talking means they are not going to greet each other they are not going to meet both are busy in their own worlds now she was alone in her room she accepted her loneliness quietly without saying anything and rarely spoke to anyone she started speaking now very less she used to sit in front of her spinning wheel she started to do a spinning wheel and she did not talk to anyone she said her prayers while spinning the wheel she relaxed only in the afternoon for a short time she enjoyed herself only while feeding the sparrows she would sit in the veranda to feed sparrows she used to break the bread into small pieces before feeding sparrows hundred of birds used to sit around her this created a real uproar of sounds of little birds some birds sat on her legs while others sat on her shoulders some birds sat on her head but she never pushed them away feeding the sparrows was the happiest half an hour of the day for her the third phase of their relationship begins from these lines in the para that the one more turning point came in their relationship as soon as the author entered to the university became an adult he got a separate room with this grandma without any complaint accepted her separation from him from his loving from her loving grandson after getting a separate room she started a new activity to make herself busy to spin a wheel as we have seen from beginning that grandmother never got tired of doing any work she was busy in one or the other activity now after getting her own personal room she felt alone so that she jotted she made herself busy in the activity of spinning wheel and constantly chanting god's prayer doing that work grandmother had decided that she would take only half an hour break from her routine and she would feed sparrows during that time Here in this para, we can see the unique bonding between sparrow and the grandmother. Same which we had seen earlier in between the village dogs and the grandmother, who used to bark and howl for the stale chapatis of grandma. Same bond is shown here by the author in between sparrows and grandmother. During that fixed time, the sparrows filled the veranda with their chirpings, and enjoyed the breadcrumbs fed by grandmother. 
They even showed their love and affection towards her by sitting on her leg, hand and head and grandma showed her bonding by not shooing them from her. She allowed them to sit on her wherever they liked. The author had noticed her in the happiest mood during the whole day only in this half an hour. The author decided to go abroad for higher studies for five years. He was sure that his grandmother would be unhappy to know about it that he was going for five years and nobody was sure if she would be alive till his return. But she knew that she would be alive. The grandmother was not upset rather. She came to leave him at the railway station. She did not talk and even did not show any emotion at the station. She was saying her prayers. Her lips were moving only for prayer. She was counting the bits of her rosary and saying her prayers. She kissed his forehead silently. The author thought that perhaps it was the last sign of physical contact between them. But that was not the last meeting. After five years, when he came back, his grandmother received him at the railway station. She looked as old as she was five years old. She did not say anything while she hugged him. The author could hear that she was saying her prayer, even on the day of his arrival. The happiest moment for her was the feeding the sparrows herself and she fed them a little longer and superficially scolded them. When the author decided to go abroad for further studies at that moment, the author thought that due to immense bonding between them, she would be sentimental and might refuse his idea of going abroad. But she did not show her emotion at all or the, uh, for the author's decision. Rather, she visited the railway station to see off the author. This brought out an open-mindedness of grandmother and showed us that when the time comes, she could control her emotions for the betterment of any loving person and here especially her loving grandson she had not showed any emotions and a, while leaving abroad even the author was not sure that he would meet her again because he chose the course for five years but she was sure that she would surely meet him again. Constantly chanting prayer and counting beads of rosary was an inseparable part of grandmother's life. Even while saying farewell to the author, she hugged him at that moment, the author heard the whispering of that prayer. That hug, that blessings. The author felt like that was his last physical experience with his grandmother. Her tender and loving blessings even took him more nearer to his grandmother, his loving grandmother. Author repeated this line, he was not looking one day older. He repeated again here, even after five years, she was looking same. She from the beginning of the chapter for the author same means the author could not find any difference in her appearance or look throughout his life or we can say till her last moment. After five years, when the author came back from abroad, she looked as it is. She did the same gesture when he, she greeted him. She hugged him at that moment. He heard the same whispering of her constant prayer. The author found even on that day 
she was not so happy when she met him but for her the happiest moment for that day was to feed bread crumbs to the sparrows we know that it was the happiest moment for her on the day of arrival of the author even that day she found the same thing happiest for her the author had noticed the most loving and pleasure in her when she fed the sparrows in the evening the change came over her she did not pray instead she called woman of the neighborhood she brought an old drum she started singing and playing that drum she continued thumping the old drum for several hours she sang songs of warrior coming back to his home they had to repeatedly request and convince her to stop playing the drum they did not want to make her more tired but she did not listen that was the first evening that she did not pray the next morning she fell ill she had low fever doctor told them that fever would soon go away and she will be all right but she felt something different she declared that her end was near she told them that only few hours were left to hope for her death she had not prayed last evening so she wanted to pray she did not want to waste any more time talking to anybody the entire family objected but she neglected their objection she lay peacefully in her bed she continued praying and telling her beads after a short while the author noticed that his grandmother's lips stopped moving and the rosary fell from her lifeless fingers her face became yellow and she died a peaceful death grandmother's restricted actions sudden change in behavior surprised everyone in the family first time she had missed her prayer and instead she sang bhajans with the neighborhood woman and that was continue for few hours even she striked her hands on the drum and sang the songs of homecoming warriors constantly the whole family requested her to stop because to take too much of strain in this old age is not good for her health the author noticed from his childhood that the grandmother had never missed her prayers and her routine it was first time that had happened in her whole life that day was ended without prayer maybe it was god's intuition that he allowed her or she did as per her wish next morning she fell ill she became sick she had mild fever and doctor told that she would be fine but me the god had given her intuition or we can say she had that intuition that she would not live long her end is near she knew, she knew that within few hours god would close last chapter of her life so suddenly she realized that for so long she had not done any prayer so she decided she would not waste a single minute of her life and immediately started praying all the family members stopped her requested her not to do the prayer due to her illness but she was firm she had decided thing she peacefully slept in her bed and started chanting started praying 
she had started chanting her inaudible prayer. The family had not real, realized that she would die so soon because they could even could even imagine. Before they could think anything, her lips stopped. It was not in their imagination that she will soon leave this world. Her lips stopped and her rosary fell from her finger. There was no life in her body. She, she was dead. Her face was looking white and peaceful and family confirmed at last that she was dead. The family lifted her from the bed and laid her on the ground. This was the custom ritual and they followed it. They wrapped her with a red colored cloth. They expressed the sorrow to each other for a few hours. Then they came out of the room to make arrangements for her funeral. In the evening, they went to her room. They brought a wooden stretcher to take her for her last rites. The sun was setting in her room and veranda. There was shine of golden light at that time. Suddenly, they stopped halfway in the courtyard. The author's grandmother was lying dead in her room. Her body was covered with a red shawl. Everyone in the veranda and up to her Thousands of sparrows sat near her dead body. They were all silent. Everyone felt sorry for the birds. They thought that they had come to eat bread. So the author's mother brought some bread. She broke it into small pieces. Similar to as his grandmother used to do. She threw those crumbs to them. The birds took no notice of them. When they carried her dead body outside, the sparrow flew away quietly. Next morning, one of the helpers of the house, clean, house cleaner cleans the floor. He put all the crumbs into the dustbin. This is the last para. In this, the author has said to us that they have followed all the customs and rituals of the family for her funeral. But suddenly, while sun was setting, her room and the veranda was filled with full of golden light. When? They were taking the stretcher in the veranda. They saw that family members had noticed that the, her room and the veranda was full of sparrows, full of thousands of sparrows. They sat silently in the courtyard like they also came over there to feel sorry about the death of their loving grandmother. They silently scattered around the grandmother. There was a complete silence. No chirping, no sound of sparrows. The family felt sorry for the sparrows. They thought that it was their routine. That, uh, that's why they were there in the house for the breadcrumbs. But it was not the case. Here we can see an inseparable bonding between the sparrows and the grandmother. As she was that dead, that intuition, the sparrows felt and gave their presence before the last journey. Or we can say during the last journey of grandmother. 
family mother also thought that that they were there for the food but she was wrong as soon as the family took the dead body of grandmother they flew away silently from there and the author mentioned in last line that this sweeper swept the cleaner of the house swept the bread crumbs and threw it into the dustbin that is no sparrow had turned around no sparrow had turned back to the house again for their food with grandmother they too had left the house of the author for forever so you are done with the explanation children in the next slides i have given an introduction and important textual questions which you need to write in your main book and uh, you need to learn this for your examination upcoming examination and i will take your evaluation test when i will teach you three or four subjects i will start my evaluation test so learn well children write it properly in neat and legible handwriting in your main english book english text notebook learn well and go it go through your answers thoroughly thank you